happy 2024 everyone let's start our new year with chess study chess learning chess training or chess analysis like this one for today's video we have this very interesting and exciting game between Alexei Sokolsky and Leonid Strugach and the game was happened in 1958 that was you know pretty long long years but the history of chess game is here so what made this game interesting and exciting because Alexei Sokolsky moved before and what's with this before it's pretty normal nowadays because this before is called polish opening or orangutan opening or also called sokolsky opening so alexei sokolsky use the sokolsky opening or b4 opening so let's see the result let's see the outcome of this, of this game and how sokolsky handle the Sokolsky opening. That's very interesting, right? A5, that's the main line. Now, Bishop B2. And here, Black move F6 to support the E5 pawn. Let's just go back. What are the common response of Black for this kind of first two moves? The, the useful is Bishop takes B4. Just give up this um, pawn, Bishop E5. And then you have to protect this one so you will not just go back your your bishop to f8 to protect this one just develop your knight because if bishop takes knight of course queen will capture and just imagine the rook on a1 is sweating that badly and if we will continue you have your options to go um e3 knight f3 or c4 you can also move c3 pressuring the bishop on b4 but in the game Leonid Sugach decided, okay, I gotta support this um, E5 pawn. Instead of moving the D6, which is, I believe, more decent um, than F6, Knight F6 is um, actually would be some, some trouble because of this B5. And then if you want to support this one, uh, it might go to Knight D4, which is um, not good for black. So D6 is more decent than moving F6. So let's, uh, let's see F6. And now, as you can see, the h5 going to the king on e8 is now open, available for white for some tactics for the opportunity of exploiting the weakness, which is the light square, the diagonal light square. So let's continue. Now, e4, of course, the, um, aside from developing your piece, aside from controlling the center, this queen is now ready to go for a check but um you will not get, go for a check immediately because there's still a g6 you have to prepare for the moment that your queen will go and check so bishop takes b4 sacrificing the pawn it's like um since you would protect your e5 i cannot capture that one i will have a chance first to develop my queen by moving e4 and now capture the b4 pawn i don't care bishop c4 targeting the Light square weakness going to g8. Knight c6, development for, for black. f4, now is the time to break the center and the king side. Since black moved the f6, it gave an opportunity for white to expose more the, the black king. e takes f4, which is, um, of course, a very risky move. If you are playing with the black piece here, what is the best move? Instead of you capturing the e takes f4, just queen e7. Make sure your queen is out for this kind of position. Then this later on the bishop and you, you may cast the queen side. That's um, safer than uh, staying your king in the middle or in the center. I mean, Okay, let's go back. So e takes f4. Knight h3, the idea of course is to go knight um, to capture back the f4 pawn because you gave up or you gave away two pawns, the b4 and the f4. You cannot afford to um, go for another, uh, you know, a Merry Christmas pawn, which is that that might be a problem for, for white if black could uh, protect and defend well the black king. So, knight g7 for 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 black, which is a very tight position now as you can see knight takes f4 and queen h5 is now ready the only 
um, thing that White has to consider is the g6 move. Knight a5 attacking the bishop on c4 and here. After probably of enough time analyzing the game, Alexei Sukolsky found a very aggressive move, very interesting. It's like, I don't want to wait. I have no time to do some, you know, moving away piece because the bishop is under attack. I will go. Bishop takes f6, sacrificing the bishop. So two bishops are hang at the same time. Rook f8. What will happen if um black would go? Knight takes queen h5 check. G6. Of course, that is force. Just imagine this one. Knight takes g6. It, you will capture that one, of course. That's a good by rook. The good by queen also. Because after moving here, queen takes. If, for example, um, after knight takes g6. Uh, hold on. Knight takes g6. It's a good by queen. So queen h5 is ready. I, I mentioned earlier that queen h5 has to be in a good timing if you want to execute the queen h5 check you have to do it with the timing all right so um for this one knight takes c4 wasn't on the board rook f8 attacking the bishop and here knight h5 the idea is not only supporting the uh, the bishop on f6 but looking for a checkmate just imagine this bishop is controlling the the only square or the only escape for the king and there's a knight here knight takes g7 uh, checkmate if here knight takes c4 what would happen if the rook will go rook takes f6 knight takes f6 just imagine this one g takes f6 queen h5 knight g6 and just bishop to g8 to pressure bishop takes eight, um h7 of course so. This knight will say goodbye soon. Castling is also coming. Too much pressure, undeveloped, outplay. There is no good square for the bishop. Uh, for the knight, you have to go back in order for, for black to have protect the black king. So this will be the position if uh, rook takes f6. But Leonid Strugat decided, okay, you're going to go knight takes c4. And here, continue, knight takes g7. King f7, which is a, a force move, castling. King g8, you have to make sure your king is safe, but the, the position is no longer safe. But according to engine, this is equal 0, 0.0. Why? A black has to play accurately in order to protect the, of course, the exposed king. You have to play, um, to play accurately here. So queen h5 4 for white. Rook takes f6. Because the bishop is too strong, you have to eliminate the strong piece. Uh, you have to sacrifice your piece to, you know, quality down is not bad at all. As long as you uh, make sure you, you can um, play a good chess. Rook takes f6. And here knight g6 is still equal according to the engine. Rook takes g6, pawn takes, queen, queen takes g6, and here, the bad move, king h8. Bad move because of knight e8 check, queen e7, of course, um, that there's a checkmate here, so you have to move your, your queen, protecting this one. But after of knight f6, how can you now protect this coming check? If you gotta go queen g7, for example, and then queen h5, you have no choice but to cover checkmate. So let's go back a um, little bit here. In this position, according to engine, this is still equal. In spite of giving away too much pieces by, um, by white, but the position is equal. You all you have to do is to play knight e5. Attacking the queen. The idea of moving king h8 from g8 to h8 because of this knight e6 discovered check attacking the queen in order for for black to prevent that one you have to do, go counter attack and counter attack is 
very essential especially when you are under attack you, you have to find counter attack attack is the best defense knight e5 attacking the queen if you will go queen g3 of course you have to move away your queen and without you giving away the g file because the king is on g file and then you can go king h7 and then if we will continue knight f5 queen f6 and knight c3 if we will continue the game according to engine not, not just equal but of course we are human we have emotion we can feel the pressure and every time we feel the nerve the pressure blunder is just waiting to <laughs> to say present in the moment you cannot hold the the pressure at all so this is a good game it is just of course too much pressure because the king is exposed and knight, knight e5 has to be considered in order for black to you know to save the game but after king h8 the game is over knight e8 queen e7 protecting this one knight f6 inevitable checkmate